When I left Silicon Valley to become a college teacher, I wondered why college wasn't a lot more like the world of work. Teaching business, I had this idea that if I could immerse my students in a real, authentic learning environment, they'd be much better prepared for the very competitive world that they were about to enter. But I have to confess that for all those years in the classroom, I didn't quite find the courage to fully experiment with my idea. That is until about three years ago. And here's what finally convinced me and uh, gave me the nudge that I needed. For years, I've studied the results of employer surveys that talk about the important skills that employers want but aren't seeing in college graduates. And here's the list. And then when you consider that two reliable studies reported that while 96% of college administrators believe they're doing an adequate job of preparing graduates, but only 11% of business leaders think so, <laughs> I decided the time had come to do something. So I gave my idea a name, Subject Matter Immersion. And you're probably thinking, well, I've never heard of that. Well, you're about to. What if a course was created with no syllabus? And what if students were completely immersed in a subject from the very first minute of the very first day of the very first class? And what if students decided what they would learn and how they would learn and how they would be accountable for what they had learned? Now, this might sound a little like educator abdication where the teachers just sit back and watch chaos reign. But I assure you, it's anything but and it's much more than what's known in higher education as experiential or act active learning. And so I want to share with you the how and the why of subject matter immersion and why I think this really matters. In the beginning, it was just a hypothesis, but it's not anymore. This works, and I'm anxious to talk about the, the remarkable things we see happening with our students and our teachers and some of the challenges, too. So subject matter immersion goes something like this. On the very first day of an accounting course, your teacher says, welcome to your life as the accounting department for the Legacy Cookie Company. The company's been a little short of accounting help these last few months, and we've tried to, uh, to keep receipts and bank statements and, and some other important documents. We've got them all right here. Um, and your first task is to create last quarter's financial statements. So let's get started. So the students dive in, maybe a little terrified at first, but within a few days, they developed a deep understanding of financial statements, how they work, what they look like, why they're important, how to create them, and why they're so important. And all semester long, students learn accounting by doing and being immersed in accounting, acting as accountants for the Legacy Cookie Company. Or imagine day one of a leadership course. No syllabus, no reading list, and no assignments, yet. And you're told, welcome to your life as leaders. What you will learn about leadership in this course is up to you. But more importantly, what you become as a leader depends on you. You'll decide what you'll learn and how you'll learn it. You'll determine how to demonstrate mastery of the discipline of leadership. And you'll also determine the standards for how you'll learn a grade in the course. So what will it take for you to fully immerse yourselves in the topic and truly become leaders? And just like that, 30 or more students are on their feet. They're talking, they're making notes on a whiteboard, designing what they will experience, how they will experience it, what they'll do, what they'll become, and how they'll hold themselves accountable. And they set the bar very, very high. Students do leadership in this course through projects, like uh, producing a podcast on leadership, or creating campus events, or teaching students at a local elementary school about leadership. But their becoming leaders happens as they assume roles they never thought they were capable of, leading a team or a group of teams or maybe the entire course in a specific task. Well, you might be thinking, okay, accounting and leadership, I, I get that, 
But what about English? Yeah, we're doing this with an English course, too. And sure, they learn about grammar and mechanics and thesis statements, but rather than the usual syllabus review on day one, the process is the same. We take them out of their comfort zone, and we ask them to create an experience where they immerse themselves in seeking answers to and writing about questions of deep significance to them. It might be a shy student who wonders how his field of study adds value to society, or a young woman exploring the cultural uh, factors affecting her generation's fears about marriage and relationships. But because this matters to them, they're more engaged, they're highly motivated, much better writers, and excited learners who embrace the opportunity to become, as Sal Khan described it in a 2015 TED Talk, agents of their own learning. And I love that description. And this is happening on our campus with information technology, uh, paralegal studies, digital marketing, and health professions courses too. Now what the students experience varies by discipline, but the common thread of our learning and teaching framework is that students take responsibility for their learning as they determine how to deeply immerse themselves in a subject. Now you might wonder, how do you make sure that these students don't wander off the path of developing important skills? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. The learning outcomes are very, very well defined and made very clear to the students. And everything that a student created must satisfy those outcomes. Now, you can imagine that some students, and most students, in fact, are not expecting a learning environment like the ones I've just described. And honestly, some are more than a little resistant at first. I mean, they want a syllabus and the details of exactly what to do because it's all they've ever known. And taking responsibility for their learning is a new experience for them. But hasn't learning for many of us just become a matter of doing a Google search or asking Alexa? I mean, I asked Siri the other day what life would be like if Wikipedia didn't exist. And she answered, I don't know. I don't see anything about that on Wikipedia. <laughs> now, we believe it's vital for our students to become agile learners. And by that, I mean the ability to take experiences and lessons learned from one environment and apply them in new and different and challenging ones. And they're not very agile at first when we ever so lovingly kick them out of the educational Garden of Eden. But we've discovered that once students embrace and experience subject matter immersion, they don't want to learn in any other way. And that's when we see this remarkable transformation as their self-confidence soars, as they discover the potential deep within them, and they become agents of their own learning. It is not unusual for a student to stop me on campus or send me an email and tell me about their experience and how it's changing them. Just the other day, a student said, I love this because I own this. Zoe said, this class has made me want to be better prepared for whatever comes my way. It's helped me see that I am so much more than I see in myself. Jacob said, my self-esteem and self-worth have risen to new levels, and now I know I can accomplish anything. Finally, David, a student in a leadership course, said, in this class, I'm an actor and not an object, and in my next class, I'm only an object, and I can hardly stand it. Now, this really describes the power and the impact of subject matter immersion and the challenge of a campus-wide implementation. But students aren't the only ones who face some uncertainty with this. I mean, there are growing pains for teachers, too, as they have to pull back from a traditional role and assume a new one that, that really stretches them. I mean, they like the security and comfort of syllabi and structure, too, just like the students. And designing a course with so much white space and handing control of the classroom over to the students takes courage and a very healthy dose of professional humility. I mean, it's a major paradigm shift for that professor who's invested in those uh, carefully crafted lectures and dazzling PowerPoint decks. 
You've seen them, I can tell. <laughs> and a change like this is hard work. It's really hard. And maybe that's why I didn't fully experiment years ago. But as faculty have embraced this, they're energized and they're excited and they grow just as much as the students. One said, without a syllabus to hide behind, I'm much more in tune with the students. And Leslie Robbins, the faculty member who has pioneered this effort with me, said, I thought I was a really good teacher. But through this experience, I realized I had not yet done my very best teaching. Now, we're not doing this yet in every course, but it's a top priority, and we expect full implementation by fall of 2019. But I want to be clear, for us, this isn't just some program, but this is a principle-based pattern for changing everything that happens in our classrooms. So why would we care so much about all of this? Well, remember the gap between what employers expect and what colleges are really delivering? That's why. A 2018 study by the American Association of Colleges and Universities asked hiring managers what they think about graduates' preparedness in important workplace qualities. 87% of the more than 500 managers surveyed said the ability to apply knowledge and skills to the real world was the most important quality. And that's intellectual agility. But they also said that only 39% of the students were prepared to do this. Now, that gap is shocking to me. But as students are immersed in a subject and they become agents of their own learning, they develop this important quality, the ability to apply knowledge and skills, and the gap closes for them. One executive recently introduced to our model said, a new employee with this kind of real-life experience means less training is needed, more, more immediate productivity, and would give any employer a distinct advantage in the marketplace, plain and simple. According to career expert Allison Doyle, someone starting a career today will change jobs 10 to 15 times during their working life. And it's highly likely that more than half of those jobs will be in industries that haven't even been created yet. I mean, jobs like drone operator, app developer, cloud engineer, big data analyst, blogger, digital marketing manager, and Uber driver were unheard of just five or ten years ago. Google just turned 20 last September. YouTube's only been around for 14 years. The iPhone for 12. Qualtrics, an experience management company that uh, was acquired last year for $8 billion. 17 years old. And Lime and Bird, those rideshare scooter companies whose scooters I'm learning to dodge on the streets of Salt Lake City, are both only two years, are less than two years old. But they both have valuations in excess of a billion dollars each. Now, this pace of innovation won't stop. If anything, it will accelerate. And as the leader of an institution of higher education, I go to work every day thinking about the world that awaits this, young, this amazing generation of young people and what we must do to make sure that they're ready and prepared and that being agile learners becomes part of their DNA. And with all the twists and the pivots that this and future generations will encounter, only someone who has mastered personal and professional agility will survive and thrive. And because the world of work is so dynamic and ever-changing, my belief is that higher education must change too, dramatically. I mean, think about the first day on a new job and compare that with the first day of most college courses you may have taken. <laughs> that new job doesn't come with a textbook or a syllabus or a reading and assignment list. And you're not given a quiz every day when you come to work just to make sure that you've done your homework. No, you're much more likely to be handed that shoebox full of receipts on day one with the expectation that you'll know exactly what to do with it, right? So with all of this, and if we really want our students to be ready 
and agile and prepared. Why wouldn't we do everything possible to mirror the world that awaits them and immerse them in real-life learning experience? A 2017 Heckinger report suggests that we've entered a proven economy that's driving a revolution in the way education is constructed and delivered and used. I like to think that subject matter immersion just might be a little part of that revolution. Want to join me?